tonight, I invite you to get on the surgical table. I'm going to tell you why. These are not my words. God says in his word that his word is a double-edged sword and that it pierces to the dividing asunder of our soul, that's our mind, will, and emotions, and our spirit. It clarifies what's going on in our minds and in our hearts, and it reveals who we really are in Christ in the spirit. And it says that it also cuts so deep that it touches bone and marrow. So I'm telling you tonight, in the hearing of God's word tonight, there is healing for your body. In the hearing of God's word, there is clarification for your questions. In the hearing of God's word, there is a renewing of your mind that will take place today. Amen? I believe that with all my heart. I, man, listen, let's just get to it. So look, tonight is a night where we typically take time to worship. We reflect on God's word and we partake in communion. And, you know, I'm not dismissing uh, all our previous services when we've done the first Wednesday of the month. We call it first Wednesdays where we take time to, you know, observe communion and get the word and, and you know, worship and be together. But I'm telling you that there is nothing typical about tonight. I want you to hear what I just said. There is nothing typical about tonight. As a matter of fact, going forward, the first Wednesday of the month will no longer be what you typically expect. I'm telling you right now, I'm, I, I, I just woke up a couple of, couple of days ago, and I, I looked at my wife, and I said, everything's changing. Everything's changing. Everything's changing. And let me tell you what we're going to start doing the first Wednesdays of the month. We're going to call them upper room nights. And here's what we're going to do on those nights. We're going to have some time to worship, right? We're going to open up altars, if you want to call it that. We're going to take some time to pray. We're going to take some time to really press into God. We're going to take some time to consider the word. But we are going back to Acts. I don't know about you. Look, I'm going to tell you something because I know we live in a day and age where they even want to make church politically correct. There's nothing politically correct that will invade what God is doing here. We will worship. We will praise. We will declare the goodness of God. We will teach the whole truth. We will speak in tongues. We will raise our hands. We will shout unto the Lord. We will do all that. And let me tell you why. Because it's in his word. It's in his word. Amen? All right, so you guys are already interrupting what I had tonight. <laughs> Like I said, tonight is not, a, is not typical, but it's not typical because tonight things will shift. They're going to shift. Let me give you some context for what I'm talking about. In the final moments of Jesus' time on this earth with the disciples, he was announcing victory to them. He knows he's going to the cross and he tells them, guys, I have to leave but there's another one that will come, and he will comfort you, and he will lead you in peace, and he will remind you of the words of my father, and he's saying, from this point forward after I'm gone, you shall never be alone. I will be with you, with you to the end of the age, wherever you go. I'll be with each and every one of you. He's announcing victory to them, and all they hear is defeat. All they hear is loss. All they hear is fear. They're lamenting, they're crying, they're complaining, they're saying, but where are you going and why can't I go there? Now get this, this was Jesus, the Son of God in the flesh. This was the manifestation of God in human form. This was the one who spoke and created all things. Do you realize that when God said in the very beginning, let there be light, do you know that that word is still carrying into today? You look it up for yourself. Scientifically, there are still universes, galaxies that are just beginning to come to be and they're discovering and they're seeing these things and they're seeing light happen. God's word is, it, it, man, listen, it's not just a word for yesterday. It's not just a word for the people in the Bible. It's our word and it's working even at this very moment. It is still creating. And this is the God. This is Jesus Who's before them, speaking life, creating with his words. They're right in front of God. 
hearing of triumph and victory, but they were so attuned to the defeat that they saw in their heart, to the disappointment that they had based upon the circumstances that they saw. And they couldn't even discern what God wanted to do. You know, I have a question tonight. When is enough enough? I want you to hear where I'm coming from with this. When is enough enough? When? When do we finally get to the place where it's like I am done and enough is enough? Enough is enough. And I'm going to tell you why I asked that question. Because the disciples, man, they had walked with Jesus. They had witnessed the power of God in person. They had experienced relationship with God firsthand. But they were still stuck. And that's where a lot of people are today. And if the shoe fits, don't get offended. It's time to change it. Tonight's your night to let it go and get moving with God. But it's true of a lot of people today. Can I tell you something about who you are? You are a walking billboard for God's blessing. You are a walking billboard for God's blessing. You've experienced this healing power. You've overcome great obstacles. And yet, we still have people that claim the name, the title, the life, the call of a follower. But we're still afraid. We still question if it's true. We still doubt God. We still go in the opposite direction. We still disobey. We still seek alternatives. Again, if the shoe fits, don't wear it. But don't get offended. Let God's word go deep. Let it cut. Because in that cutting, it heals. See, there are still followers today that, followers of Christ, alive unto God, according to the scriptures, seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You know where Jesus is, according to the scripture? He's seated at the right hand of the Father. That's where you are in God's eyes. And yet we have followers that still claim I'm depressed, that believe they are less, that refuse to take steps of faith, that use God's word as a last resort, that pray when everyone else has failed. And my question is, why is this happening? How is this possible? And I submit to you that it's because too many rely on the wrong thing as if it's right. We, what we look to as enough isn't enough at all. It's not enough at all. You know, there was a time in the Old Testament times where the scriptures record in 2 Kings uh, that the land was in famine. The economy had tanked. Everything went south. Whatever food was available was super expensive. Sound familiar? Everything was going haywire. People were in hardship. Listen, if you look at 2 Kings 6, what you'll see is that people were making deals for I'll eat your son today and you can eat mine tomorrow. It was that bad. And in the midst of all this dreadful, terrible, horrible, tragic situations happening, as bad as it had gotten, in the middle of all this, the prophet Elisha shows up and says to the king, by this time tomorrow, by this time tomorrow, not in your tomorrows, tomorrow night, if he was speaking right here right now, tomorrow night by 7.50 with 19 seconds in the evening, by this time tomorrow 
the best flower, I'm paraphrasing here, the best flower will sell for just a shekel at the gates of Samaria. In other words, here's what he's declaring. I'm telling you that by tomorrow, everything changes. Completely. Completely. And the king's right hand said what I heard some of us think. Listen to what the king's right hand, his right hand counselor, his main man says this in response to this before the king and to Elisha the prophet. He says, even if the Lord opened the gates of heaven, could this actually happen? Could this actually happen? God, your word says it, but could this actually happen? God, you declare that it is your will that I prosper. Could this actually happen? God, you say that what, what you have brought together, let no man tear apart. Could it actually be, Lord, that your will is that my marriage be re healed, restored, redeemed, transformed, renewed? Could it actually be, Lord? This is, this is what he's asking. And I want to point something out, that Elijah's reply to this man was, you will see it, but you will not eat any of it. And I'm going to tell you very closely, very clearly tonight, to pay close attention, because this message is for believers. And I want to clarify what I mean by that. I want to be very clear. This message, this this. This, this that we're digging into in the word, this opportunity for breakthrough, this, this transforming power of the gospel that, that functions in power and in demonstration, this release, this breakthrough, this change, this new life is available to that person that believes and believes only. Only. The scripture says that the man that seeks God, that asks God for wisdom, and then doubts, says that he is a double-minded man. That he is like the waves in the sea that are tossed to and fro by the wind. And here's what, here's what, here's what God says. That person can expect to receive Nothing. So what we're hearing tonight is for the believer. And I'm going to challenge you to ask yourself this question. Will I only believe God? Will I only believe God? Only. See, I'm talking to a people who can look past what was once enough and today believe, God, you are enough in my life. God, what your word promises is enough in my life. God, what you instruct me is enough. Where you're going, God, is enough. For me. I don't have to know all the details. I don't have to be in control any longer. I don't want to be in control because enough is enough is enough. So the scripture says that the next day before this happens, well, while it happened, it says that there were four lepers at the entrance of the city gate where this king was. And I want you to get clearly the picture of what's going on here. These guys are lepers. They suffer from a flesh-eating disease that tears the body apart and disfigures it. 
it leaves the flesh open. It causes a stench. It's detestable to the average eye, to the average person. And these guys sit outside the city gate. Why? Because they're quarantined. They're not allowed to be among everybody else. A mask ain't even cutting it. We just don't want you around at all. They're excluded from society because of their leprosy. It was so bad that in these days, if you were a leper, here's what the, what, what the, 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 what the law dictated, that you, if somebody was coming near you, around you, if somebody was walking in your vicinity, if you happened to be going somewhere, they had towns for these people. Like cities just, just for lepers because they didn't want them anywhere else. And, the, and, and so in these days, if you happened to, to come across people, here's what you had to do. You had to shout as loud as you could for everyone to hear, Unclean, unclean. Stay away. Don't come near. I'm infectious. I'm damaged goods. I'm dirty. I'm a stench to you. Unclean, unclean. So these guys are sitting outside the city gate. And on this next day, Elisha, uh, Elisha Elisha's prophecy is about to break out. Listen to what 2 Kings chapter 7, verses 3 through 9 tells us about these leprous men. It says, Now there were four men with leprosy at the entrance of the city gate. They're sitting in this state of life. It's, it's horrible. And they said to each other, Why stay here until we die? If, if we say we'll go into the city, the famine is there and we're going to die. And if we stay here, we will die. So let's go over to the camp of the Arameans and surrender. If they spare us, we live. And if they kill us, then we die. At dusk, they got And they went to the camp of the Arameans, and when they reached the edge of the camp, no one was there. For the Lord had caused the Arameans to hear the sound of chariots and horses and a great army, so that they said to one another, Look, the king of Israel has hired the Hittite and Egyptian kings to attack us. There was a shout, a sound, a declaration of victory that the enemy heard and they had to flee before these guys even get there. So the scripture says they got up and they fled in the dusk and abandoned their tents and their horses and their donkey. They left everything. They left the camp as it was and they ran for their lives. The men who had leprosy reached the edge of the camp, entered one of the tents, and watch this. They ate and they drank. Then they took silver, gold, and clothes and went off and hid them. They returned and entered another tent and took some things from it and hid them also. Then they said to each other, what we're doing is not right. This is a day of good news. And we're keeping it to ourselves. If we wait until daylight, punishment will overtake us. Let's go at once and report this to the royal palace. You know, there comes a point of awakening for each and every one of us. When you become so aware of your condition, of your results... And it is in that place of awakening where you see your condition and you are aware of your mindset and you realize there's got to be better than this. And for you, believer, 
Here's what that sounds like. This is not God's best for me, for us. This is not what God's will reveals for me. You know what that is? It's the sound of victory ringing in your heart. It's the point of decision where you take a step out. Because you know what happened with these guys? They got to the point where they said, they say we're going to die. We are living dead. We're living dead. So why stay here any longer? Enough with the stigma. Enough with the labels. Enough with what people might think. Enough with, a, with, with the surety of death coming. Enough with the challenges. Enough with everything that's happening. Enough with the famine. Let's get up and let's do something different. Let's try something different. Let's go to the place we've never gone before. Let's step out. These guys had no clue what was ahead. You know, things don't have to look right or be right around us for a shift to take place. Unfortunately, there are some that we don't make a move of faith. And it's not even a move of faith at all. We don't take a step in what we think is faith until we know all the details. And I submit to you, that's not faith at all. So don't get mad at God. Don't get mad at God. God's not withholding anything. And so these guys were in bad times. They were in bad shape themselves. But they had to shift from not living at all to living. Can I share with you a thought? It's time to either get busy living or get busy dying. It, it, it's time to make a decision that I am going to live for God. That I am going to follow what the Lord says. That I am going to go where God tells me. That I am going to step out of my shell because I believe I'm shy. Show me that in the word. Show it to me in the word. You won't find it. Here's what you will find. Only be strong and courageous. The righteous are as bold as a lion. And so from this story, what we see is that when you make the choice, when you make the choice, when you say enough is enough is enough, it is then that you can begin to step out and discover what God has for you. Anybody here at that point were just like, you know what? Enough is enough. Yes. Enough is enough. See, as long as you remain in whatever that place there is, According to the scripture, according to their example, you're busy dying. Can I say something? If we're not busy about the kingdom, if we're not active in the body, if we're not going past being partakers and we're not becoming participators, if we're not in partnership with the Lord, then what are we doing? Because I'm going to tell, tell you what we're not doing. We're not living according to the kingdom. Still love me, right? Still love me, right? Okay. So this leads me to a point. This leads me to a point. Listen, until what's keeping you stuck isn't enough, you will never transition into what is. 
until you make the choice to move past that place where you are stuck and the excuses that you make for staying there. Until that is, until you reach that place where you realize this is not enough. This does not fulfill me. This does not add wisdom to me. This does not increase me. This does not help me. This does not point me to Jesus. This is not taking me where God has called me to do. This is leading me to disobedience. Unless that place where you're stuck, unless you get to the point where you say, that is not enough for me, you'll never discover what is enough. You won't. Can I tell you, enough is enough. I'm done trusting men. Hey, can I give you a news flash? No president, no vice president, no governor, no senator, no assemblyman, no mayor, no councilman, no person is God. And I'm going to tell you why I share that. Because we have gotten to a state where we're crying out to government in place of God. We're celebrating government is doing all these things. They're giving us all this stuff free. We don't have to work. We've got all these programs. Look how much they're doing for each and every one. It is a trap. Let me tell you something that is true. It is absolutely true, and you will find it in the scriptures, that anything that encourages a person to remain lazy leads to destruction. I said it. It's recorded. I will not retract it. It is scriptural. The diligent man, the person who puts their hands to the plow is the one that is qualified For all that the kingdom promises. Enough is enough with Fox, with CNN, with CNBC, with ABC, with whoever. Enough is enough. Enough is enough with presidents and political leaders. Enough is enough whether you're a donkey or an elephant. Enough is enough with political division. Enough is enough. Enough is enough with your bank account. Enough is enough with your friends. Enough is enough with your investment portfolio. Enough is enough with your possessions. Why? Because it's not enough. It's not enough. And what's the proof of that? Just open your eyes and look at the world that we live in today. Can I tell you enough is enough with COVID? Enough is enough with the imposition of our freedoms. Enough is enough with telling me as a parent how I'm supposed to allow you to teach them what's my job to begin with. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. I don't need you to tell me how to teach children about race. You know why? Because the scripture doesn't identify color. Oh, but pastor, what about all the injustices that have happened? When is enough enough? And when do we stop subscribing to the label of victims and accept our God-given identity as victorious? When? See, as long as it remains enough for you, whatever it is, you will die there. The life and hope, any life and hope that you have in Christ, it will slowly waste away. It will wither. It will die. So I just want to leave you with some things. And I'm going to try and get through this very quickly. The first thing is, don't tell me that. Don't tell me to take my time, brother. 
You do not want to make that mistake. But you know what? He said it, so. Listen, you'll never know what's enough unless you know what is more than enough. You will never know what is enough until you know what is more than enough. People of God, can I just say to you, it's time to rise to the occasion beyond casual Christianity. Can I just, can I just say that in, in pure love? It's time to get past casual Christianity. Listen, this is not something additional in your life. It is our life. It is our life. This isn't something that we fit into our schedule. This is our life. This is our priority. This is our call, our command, our mandate. This is our privilege. This is our honor. It's time to get real and be diligent about loving God, about living for God, about following God, about doing what God instructs us, and about being in the body and doing what God is calling us to do. It's time to draw a line. Draw a line. Can I, Tony and Rudy, can you guys take it? Oh, sorry about that, brother. Good catch, though. Real good catch. The light blinded me, man. My bad. But I want, I, want, I want you to think about this. It's time to draw a line. It's time to draw a line. And I'm going to tell you why. Because when you finally identify what your line is, now you know where you belong and you don't. Never mind, guys. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Don't worry about it. Never mind. It's all right. I'm going to draw a line. It's all right, guys. Thank you. Come on, give it up for them. I'm going to draw a line. And I'm going to put that down right there. And I'm just putting down this piece of tape to just represent the place where you say, okay, this is it. This is where I make a decision. This is where I no longer can follow the path I've been following. From this point forward, that's the other side. And that's where I have to go. That's what I have to choose. Listen, when I left the hospital, here's what I was told. You'll never be the same. You'll never be the same, I was told. I was told by the best pulmonologist that Crystal Run has, the best cardiologist that they have. I was told on two, two separate appointments, I was told, what you just went through, the damage that you suffered in your lungs, and they're showing me x-rays, the damage that you suffered in your lungs, the scarring that you will have, you will never be able to breathe the same again. That's what they told me. They told me how I'd be limited. But you see, here's, here's the problem. The world's experts were telling me that I would not be the same, and they didn't know that I, would, I already wasn't the same. Let me tell you why I say that. Let me tell you why I say that. Look, Acts 17.25 tells me that God is the one who gave me life and breath and everything else. Psalm 73.26 tells me that God is the strength of my heart. Isaiah 53 tells me, tells us that Jesus was pierced for our transgressions and the punishment so that we can live in God's peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed. Psalm 91 tells me that with long life he shall satisfy me. 
And listen closely. And while they were telling me, no, you just got to abide by our diagnosis, they didn't know that I abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Oh, pastor, why you got to over-spiritualize it? Let me tell you, let me tell you this. So that was their diagnosis. That was their diagnosis. A couple of weeks ago, I'm already preaching, and I know that you notice that, you know, like, pastor's just sitting down. Pastor's not, he's not really pushing too much. Something's wrong with pastor. And I woke up. And I said, no. 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 Listen, when I left the hospital, the very first decision that I made was, I will not leave this experience traumatized. I will not live in fear of any of this. I, I refuse to. I refuse to. So they told me that about my lungs. Well, like I said, a couple of weeks ago, I said, I was reminding myself, I was encouraging myself in the word. I was reading the word. As a matter of fact, I was reading this scripture because a friend of mine um, who I was just preaching for a couple of weeks ago, he said to me, hey, man, I'm meditating on 2 Kings 7. And he said to me, I've had enough. He said, I've had enough. And I said, Pastor Buddy, I, I, I got I to I, I look into that. Well, he preached on that last week. And if you don't believe me, you can go check for yourself. We didn't preach the same message. <laughs> That's not me. But what I will tell you is this. I, that, that resonated with me, man. I've had enough. Enough is enough. And I said, you know what? I'm going to do the very thing that would push my lungs to a limit that they say I can't. So I got on my treadmill. And I start walking. Listen. I don't even have my phone. I downloaded an app called the Nike Run Club app. And listen, the coach talks you through it. He's talking in your ear, and your music is in the background. He says, all right, throw your shoulders back, tuck your tummy in. You're running now. Make sure that you're leaning, you're landing, not on your heels. You're landing on the ball of your foot, and you're rolling through it. We got five more minutes to go, and I'm, and I'm walking. And I said, no, I can run. Because the scripture tells me that I shall run and not grow weary. I shall walk and I shall not faint. So I get to running and I'm breathing. I'm opening up my lungs. Well, today I got a phone call from Dr. Anchensky, the pulmonologist. And he says, Jose, the most recent x-ray reveals there's no inflammation there's no pneumonia. It's like there was never nothing wrong with your lungs. That's our God. Don't tell me that we're just over-spiritualizing things. Don't tell me that the word of God can't bring you through. Don't tell me that it is foolish to only believe. Breath of life. We forget sometimes who our God is. Do you know that your God, our God, the almighty one and true God is still the one that Ephesians 3.20 says that is able to do immeasurably more than all that we can ask or imagine. Watch this. According to his power that's working within us. And it's for his glory. Can I say this to you? You are not the same, so stop settling for the same. 
you are a new creation. All things are new in you. I'm going to just say this, and I'll move on. I don't have time to dig into this because I want to take some time for ministry. If you want to get past enough, don't just sit there and die. Don't just sit there and die. No more. You got to go where you haven't gone. You got to go there. You got to go there. There's no other way. There is no other way. Listen, I know that right now in this moment, God is speaking to each and every heart. Whether you're here, I know we're recording this, whether you catch this online at another time. I know that God is speaking to us. I know that tonight is a moment of decision. It's a moment where you choose, where you draw a line, and you say, I'm had enough. Enough is enough with sinful things that I know I shouldn't do. Enough is enough with that. Enough is enough with compromise. With compromise. Enough is enough with shorting God. Enough is enough with playing church. Enough is enough with making excuses why I don't have time to talk to God. Why I don't have time to go to church. Why I can't serve why I can't give enough is enough is enough enough you will die in what you think is enough apart from God your life will wither away I love what these lepers said in that moment when their eyes were open they said if we stay here until we die why stay here we're going to die And they say, if we say we'll go into the city, the famine is there and we'll die. Watch this. And if we stay here, we will die. So let's go to the camp. Let's go to the camp. Let's get it out the way. Let's stop making excuses. Sir, you don't even have to get in the way. I will walk right over you. (laughs) Because enough is enough. Nothing is going to get in my way. Because I want everything God has for me. Am I speaking to a people that only believe from this point forward? And so tonight, I want you to do something. Don't even worry about that. Don't even worry about that. Because the line has been drawn. And I believe what the word says, that we are people that have been translated from darkness to the kingdom of the son of his love. That we are people who were once dead and are called to be alive. And I want to do something today that I believe is significant for church at the bridge. For each and every one of us. It's time to step over the line. And leave the place of enough. And step into the place of more than enough. Listen, if you are tired of whatever it is, there's no judgment. Nobody's looking, nobody's gonna be looking at you and going, gee, I wonder what they've been struggling with. <laughs> Ain't nobody doing that here. Not here. I can tell you that. And if it happens to happen, yeah, they won't be here too long. Because this is a house with God reigns. So if you are done with enough being enough, if you're sick and tired of being sick and tired of fear, sick and tired of living with doubt, sick and tired, enough is enough with, with, with broken mindsets, enough is enough with 
poverty mindset, enough is enough with sickness, enough is enough with believing lies, enough is enough with being stuck, enough is enough with not seeing my prayers answered, enough is enough. Then I want you to do something. I want you to get up. Everybody, get up. Because enough is enough with this sitting down. Can I, can I include one too? As I'm standing here, the Holy Spirit is saying, enough is enough with the hurt from the past. Yep. Yeah, it's time. It's time to let that past hurt go. Let me say something about that. It is destroying that. you. It enough is, is enough you. with people in church that offended you. Somebody needs to hear this. Enough is enough what happened at your last church and you brought it here looking at us the same. Enough is enough. Who's crossing over to the other side? Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us here at Church of the Bridge today. I pray that you had a personal encounter with God, that he spoke to you powerfully, and that he met you at your place of need with this message. I also want to encourage you to go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube page. By doing so, you'll be able to check out past messages, uh, past events that we've done. You'll also be able to see what's happening now and those things that are to come. And lastly, I'd like to invite you to join with us in all that God is doing with your giving. Feel free to do so on our website. Again, thank you again for joining us, and I can't wait to connect with you next week.